Welcome to Arguments Against Atheism. I'm Jim Bob. Jim Bob? Wait, so the name of the channel is Kyle, but the name of the dude that we're arguing with is Jim Bob? <laughs> Jim Bob, eh? I'm here okay. to give you the goods. So what is the argument from evil? I don't want to straw man it, so let's get it in precise form. Okay. The argument precise. from evil goes I appreciate as follows. It. Premise one, God is omniscient, omnibenevolent, and omnipotent. Sure. Premise two, an all-knowing, all-loving, and all-powerful God wouldn't permit suffering in the world. Mm -hmm. Premise three, there is suffering in the world. Mm -hmm. Conclusion, God knows suffering will occur, so he either can't stop suffering, so he's not omnipotent, or he refuses to, so he's not omnibenevolent. Mm -hmm. All righty. Did you see any obvious problems? No. I think it's pretty sound logically. The interesting thing about this particular argument is it really is not necessarily an atheistic argument because you could just draw the conclusion that God either is uh, not benevolent or that uh, he just doesn't particularly care about human life or human affairs and just stays out of it. So this is not necessarily an argument against the existence of God. Therefore, it's not really an atheistic argument. Atheists do sometimes use this argument, but, um, you know, it's probably not one of the better ones that an atheist would use. It's still clever and interesting. I don't think that he strawmanned the argument there. I feel like he laid it out reasonably well. It's the Epicurus uh, quote. He didn't, he could have just quoted Epicurus, Epicurus, uh, said it uh or epicurus whatever he said he said it very succinctly whereas this guy kind of unnecessarily complicated a smidgen but uh whatever i did premise two epicurus is a youtube channel <laughs> epicurus is the name of the philosopher there you go hey if you like this clip you might like the full stream which i do every sunday more or less over on the pessimist productions patreon link down below thank you kindly states an all-knowing, all-loving, and all-good God wouldn't permit suffering in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, why not? What's the contradiction? The contradiction is that if he's all-powerful and all-benevolent, then he wouldn't allow people to suffer. <laughs> like, is that, it's, this is not complicated. I don't understand. If there is, okay, let's say you're being fucking brutally ripped to death by rhinos, right? And there's a guy standing by with a gun that could easily shoot the rhinos and save you from this horrible fate. And instead of doing that, he just kind of watches like, <laughs> why can't I whistle right now? <laughs> Whatever. He's standing there whistling badly and he's watching you as you suffer horribly and he could stop at any time, but he doesn't. Does that seem like a nice guy to you? If someone were to call that guy benevolent, would you be like, yeah, he is a pretty good guy. No, you'd be like, he's not benevolent. He stood by and watched as horrible things happened to me. And he had the power to stop it and he didn't. So where, huh? Where's the, where, okay, let's, let's just go. It seems this very low level argument from personal incredulity has no basis. From a Christian view, long-suffering is actually a virtue. It is mm. through suffering and sacrifice that we participate in the good. The overcoming of suffering is thematic in the Christian view and praxis. This okay. So this is one of these uh, suffering fetishists that Christianity has uh, wrought. And, you know, when I went on vacation uh, to Europe a few years back, a number of years back, and uh, I went to all of those European museums. I saw a huge array of old Christian art from antiquity. And uh, you could just tell that Christianity at its core is ultimately a suffering cult. They worship suffering. They love suffering. They think suffering is beautiful. Uh, this is also something you saw on display in the case of Mother Teresa, who uh, raised all of this money for the Catholic Church supposedly to help people who are suffering and dying and stuff like that in Calcutta. And then uh, when you actually looked at her operation, it was clear that none of the money was actually going to helping suffering people. It was just going to giving them a place where they could all suffer together. And uh, part of the reason for this is 
And if you look at the writings of Mother Teresa, she fetishized suffering, as so many Christians uh, do. And this clearly is just another example of that. A guy who loves suffering. Now, you know what? If you want to love suffering, then go ahead and uh, visit your local dominatrix. Get her to beat your ass and stick bamboo shoots under your fingernails. Do it that way. Don't do it the way where the rest of us have to be dragged along into it. You got a personal little suffering fetish. You wanna, you've want you been a bad boy and you need a f***ing spanking. Do that shit in your own time. Quit trying to uh, convince all of us that suffering is beautiful. Quit trying to convince the whole world that uh, it's okay that there are children starving and people being murdered and f***ed and tortured all over the f***ing globe just because your God thinks that it's f***ing neat. Because it's not. This premise also makes an assumption that suffering is evil. My question to the atheist is, what makes suffering evil? That depends on what you mean by evil. Is having an infected tooth evil? Yeah. Um, actually, if you look at the etymology of evil, the earliest definitions of evil were simply uh, obstructive in nature. So if you're walking down a path and a, uh, a large tree falls in front of you and you can no longer traverse the path, uh, that was evil. The earliest definitions of evil simply meant obstacle. But um, when we're talking about evil today, we're talking about suffering today. Yeah, um, I guess that you could say something like a toothache is not necessarily evil by a modern definition. But um, you know what is evil by most modern definitions of evil? Um, genocide, torture, mutilation, uh, abuse cruelty, these things that are done by human beings to other human beings. We consider those things evil because there is a moral agency involved. There's a human being that knows what they're doing, knows that they're causing suffering to another human being, knows that that suffering is not at all uh, going to help that person in any way, shape, or form. Um, and so, yeah, that's evil by most definitions of the word. Is a hurricane evil? What about a lion eating a baby zebra? Is yeah. that evil? Yeah, pretty These evil. are all examples of things that most we find unpleasant. If I went to a restaurant and found the chicken special to be unpleasant, would it make sense to leave a review that stated, don't get the chicken? It was immoral. I mean, a lot of people feel like it is. Um, <laughs> there are plenty of people who and take eth who have ethical qualms with chicken uh, being served as meat. There are plenty of people who have qualms with the uh, conditions that that chicken was raised in, the conditions that chicken lived in, the conditions under which that chicken was slaughtered and brought to your plate. So there are plenty of people who find that to be evil, immoral, insidious, disgusting, vile, vulgar, and obscene. Um, so yes, you could leave that review. Most people probably are not going to necessarily agree with you. Even a lot of people who do agree that there are problems with factory farming and things like that are not necessarily going to see it as like this grave evil in the world. But I don't think that when people are talking about the argument uh, from evil, they're talking about factory farming. Uh, although, you know, you could probably make a pretty good uh, philosophical case that, that is evil. But that's not what really what, what's being talked about. What we're talking about is man's inhumanity to man. We're talking about human beings engaging in actions that cause harm to other human beings knowingly and um wantonly no that's silly no it's not preferences are preferences not ethical stances that's stupid you're a moron anything can be an ethical stance <laughs> now a very similar position on morality was introduced and made popular by atheist sam harris in his book the moral landscape sam's position was this I hate the moral landscape, by the way. The moral landscape is basically, I know we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm getting off on a whole side tangent here, but the moral landscape is basically just to me proof of the cowardice of Sam Harris because immediately after tearing down the concept of God, he has to come up with this pseudo scientific justification for why Christian morality should still rule our society. Uh, morality is, is based on. The, the maximization of, of sentient well-being. I think we could all agree that, that 
suffering is bad. Well, no, Sam, we don't all agree. For one, go to your f***ing dominatrix, you f***ing suffer pig. I mean, whatever, dude. <laughs> just because you fetishize suffering in your personal life, just because you need to find some sort of deeper meaning in your own suffering does not mean for a second that all suffering that humanity undergoes is, like, a positive thing. Like, by this guy's standard, like, apparently, like, Jeffrey Dahmer should be a fucking hero, right? By, the, by your standard, because he caused suffering, but it's actually good that he did that, because ultimately suffering is good for people. Give me a break. You have to define suffering, as does the atheist who is using the argument for evil. Mm. Perhaps the atheist will say, I think that it's uh, fairly obvious that, that pain is the, the defining feature of, of what we call suffering. Well, that's not obvious. What's obvious is that we find pain unpleasant. We also find that human beings have the capacity to overcome pain. Keep in mind, there are people who were born without the ability to feel pain, and yet they arguably suffer more than those who can feel pain. Yeah, because most people do not have such a simplistic notion of suffering that they only think it pertains to physical pain. So after starting this video by saying you're not gonna straw man, at this point you are straw manning. Well, well I suppose we could redefine it and say that, that, that emotional uh, and mental anguish uh, would be the, the deciding factor in uh, what is uh, suffering. Isn't That's not redefining it. <laughs> That's just defining it accurately emotional and mental hardship an essential feature of growth even from an evolutionary perspective the cycles the human body endures are sometimes painful but did you did, this, did that dude just did he go go in did he use the singular endure and well i mean i guess it's not like a pluralization but did he use endure and then realize he should have used endures and then go back and add like a little S sound there? Endure. The cycles the human body endures are. He did. <laughs> the cycle that the human body endure. <laughs> he just went back and recorded just the S sound like that. They thought that was going to work. <laughs> and then it only comes through this channel. What a dumb Oh my god, just re-record the line, you dipshit. Sometimes painful, but they're biological processes. Are they evil? There is a larger problem for this view. I mean, wait. According to the Bible, that's a result of evil. Isn't aren't menstrual cramps supposed to be um God's punishment for like uh the fall in the Garden of Eden? Like, the Bible describes them as evil, or at least the punishment for evil. That was best articulated by William Lane Craig in his debate. Oh my god, nothing, nothing was best articulated by stupid fucking hard loser William Lane Craig. Nothing has ever been well articulated by that moron. It ...against Harris several years ago. If well-being is the basis for moral good... Is it possible to obtain the peaks of well-being by causing harm? Well, yes, it's not only logically possible, but history demonstrates that groups of people can and have maximized their well-being by causing suffering to others. Oh my God. Are you really gonna make me defend Sam Harris? Oh my God, I do not wanna defend Sam Harris, but I have to because this is so freaking stupid. Sam Harris already addressed this in his goddamn book. On an individual basis, you could improve your well-being by causing suffering to others. But Sam Harris is not talking about individualism in his book. He is talking about collectivism in his book. When he's talking about reducing harm, he's talking about reducing harm collectively across the board, not just for one person. Obviously, you could use this logic to... Um, to just say, well, I'm increasing my own well-being, therefore I'm being moral. If that were the argument that Sam Harris was making, but it's not. The argument that he's making is that the greatest good is that which spreads well-being across the largest swath of the population. Dip sh Oh, you just made me defend Sam Harris's stupid position on morality, you f***ing twat. When the atheist says, pain and suffering is bad, uh -huh. they are actually saying 
most people don't prefer to feel pain or suffering. But you do, don't you, you naughty little f***ing suffer pig? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you like it, don't you? You like to suffer. Dude, this is yet another example. I didn't expect this video to be one of these, but it is. Another one of these examples of a guy who can't just admit his kinks, who can't just admit that he wants f***ing, you know, Mistress Contessa to paddle this f***ing ass. And so instead, he's got to act like it's some sort of profound moral fucking statement or some shit. It's not. Dude, I get it, okay? You like having your fucking balls worked over like a speed bag. That's fine. That's your thing. Have fun. But quit trying to act like it's some sort of profound philosophical position that all of us should be concerned with. Most people don't prefer the taste of licorice either. Licorice. If the atheist is claiming that we ought to pursue Yeah, Krista's right. Just get a dom and pipe the fuck down. <laughs> you fucking dipshit. Done. Done. Enough of that. Oh my goodness. It's probably Catholic. I mean, yeah, they're like the most old school denomination of Christianity at this point, And they love, love that suffering shit. A lot of fucking American Christians have moved away from the suffer cult status, and now it's become like a self-help prosperity cult where, you know, if you're good, then God is going to give you all kinds of material goods in this life because America is basically a consumer culture, so that resonates with us a little bit more than the, oh, you deserve to suffer, you fucking nasty pig. But there's still plenty of the suffer cult Christians around. See, amazing. Hey!